Hello and welcome back to Chat About It. Don't chat about it with me, Rachel, aka the Queen of the Woke. And what could be more woke than my hair? Number one hater, I'm talking to you. Yeah, you. Anyway, so let's continue with today's video. Oh, but before we do that, like, share and subscribe to my channel. We are almost at 500 subscribers. Thanks to you. So thank you very much for helping me get there. So come on, we can do it. Almost there. Almost there. We're talking about Dead by Daylight today. Now, I don't cover gaming on this channel because I'm not a gamer. Long gone are my Crash Bandicoot and original formation of the Lara Croft days. Um, but the voice acting news sometimes becomes very interesting. And certainly this one that dropped yesterday. Let's have a look. So this one. Transgender actor lashes out at Dead by Daylight after being tricked into voicing deformed freak in a skirt. You can find all the links below. Dead by Daylight, a popular zombie game that features survivors trying to escape being hunted to death by a monster, is under fire from a transgender actor hired to voice a beastly character. Zoe Alexandria claims she was tricked into voicing a character she did not know the full description of, later claiming it included a transphobic skin. Enjoyed by millions of gamers worldwide and praised to its multiplayer capability, Dead by Daylight released its All Things Wicked expansion last week, featuring a new killer players must survive against. The new killer in the update is called The Unknown, which is described on the fandom site as inhuman entity that adapts its appearance as needed and has no specific gender. And they hired trans actress Zoe, Zoe Alexandria, who performed the entire role. However, the screenshot of the creature went viral on X after players discovered that one of its in-game cosmetics option for the unknown resulted in it looking like a deformed freak in a skirt, according to one user of the site. The mockery of it prompted Alexandria to write a post on Facebook confirming that the development team told her there would be no model design before the lines were recorded. The question was that the design team deliberately created the trans-adjacent skin to capitalise catering to the transphobic community. So let's have a look at the original statement by Zoe. I voiced the character, the unknown, in the Dead by Daylight at the time of voicing. It was a great experience. I was told at the time I was voicing the character that there was no model and that the creature was supposed to be amorphous. So even if there's no model produced, they should at least have some sort, sort of like sketch formation, at least to show you so you have something to go on. So... Uh, she reiterates again that they had no model design before I recorded my lines. So my assumption that the design team took my medical history and my ability to use multiple voices as an opportunity to create a character, models that encapsulate my own medical history as trans and capitalize on catering to the transphobic community. I was tricked into voicing a stereotype. Since yesterday, I have been virally harassed for being trans by thousands of people since yesterday. So, DEIs exist for a reason. Um, and the chances of the company actually realizing that potentially what they were creating was transphobic, so to say, would have been unlikely. In actual fact, it may not have even crossed their minds. You know, so who knows? Who knows what was going on? Many folks in the trans community are up in arms over this, and rightfully so. I feel that the reparations from the team that deliberately tricked me is the only logical next choice of action. I am so upset, so infuriated that people are comparing trans people to these clearly transphobic character skins. If I had any idea of the fallout that would happen after simply voicing a character, I never would have, have in the first place. Let me personally apologize to anybody who has been a victim of transphobia due to this release. Please know that you are loved. Know that you are valid. As for me, I am not okay. This has ruined my reputation, has put me physically at risk for being attacked in public if anybody recognizes my face or voice. 
can I just say this? If you're doing multiple voices, then they shouldn't actually recognize your voice. I'm I'm just saying that. Um, there were no diversity consultants on the project. Okay, so there may not be a diversity consultant there at the time of recording, but you do not know if there was a diversity consultant actually working on the project. Do you? We'd have to look that up in the credits, actually, if there was a diversity consultant. That's interesting. Um, the company knew that making a stereotypical man in a dress as a character and having a trans voice actress voice it would bring lots of money and people back it to the game. I don't know if Dead by Daylight has lost any of its subscriptions, by the way, so I can't um, I can't validate that. And, you know, I'm just reading what she's written. Um, I'm not done. I know how marketing works. This seems to be a huge ploy, and the trans community, along with myself, were the victims. Now, I do not know what the mar marketing was for that. Did they run off that? But it seems that Zoe may have just retracted that statement, okay? So on the 14th of March, even though the article I just read to you was 15th, um, she tweeted, there has been a recent misunderstanding. Anybody that thinks the skins are going away is not in the loop. Behavior is allegedly aware of the mass transphobic remarks and memes being made and the gaming community is not a reflection of the game developers i wasn't kept in the loop with the character what what the character's final look would be i was given an ambiguous description for the part and even though i tried my best to find out more continually asking for more info that wasn't possible this is why i was upset the skins themselves were never the issue lack of communication was Okay, please stop boycotting behavior. They are not transphobic. It was wrong to take bits of, inf of info and jump to your own conclusions. Behavior is a good company and has been nothing but kind and supporting through this tough process of re receiving mass harassment. For my involvement in the character, leave it alone. Soli, Alex, Andrea. All right, so... I don't approve of the mass harassment. That's not needed. Um, she voiced the character. She took the job. She did it. She voiced it. It's done. And it's now out there as part of the gameplay. There's no need to harass her for it. But I do want to draw attention here. Um, okay, where is it? I wasn't kept in the loop with the char what the character's final look would be. I was given an ambiguous description for the part, and even though I tried my best to find out more, continually asking for more info, that wasn't possible. Okay, so first of all, there is something in our industry that's called DND or an NDA, which is a do not discuss or a non disclosure agreement. And generally, when you're talking about roles, they are you're generally talking about them in the room you're not you're generally not like emailing each other about it you know just in case those emails can get hacked and you know it, it all works in different ways each production company is different as to how you actually communicate about the the characters so it might be that the reason why she wasn't kept in the loop is because people have signed those types of agreements and even after she voiced the character, that those types of agreements could have prevented any character sketches, photographs, character models being sent to her. That's always possible. Um, and also, like I say, every production company is different, so you don't you don't have to be kept in the loop if they choose not to keep you in the loop as to what the character's final look would be. It is nice. I'm not going to lie, it is really nice when they do do that and you feel included and even more as part of the team when they do do that, but it is, of course, up to them. Now, this one here, she was given an ambiguous description for the part, and even though I tried my best to find out more, continuously asking for more info, that wasn't possible. It depends on what you mean by an ambiguous description. Um, 
all descriptions that are released, the you know, the the most ambiguous description would be the one that you audition with. You're given a very like basis, basic sort of description so that you can audition effectively. Clearly, she did because she got the job. Now, when you're in the recording studio, and again, I don't know, I don't know if it was a motion capture or if she actually was in a recording booth. Whoever you are working with will give you the information as you need to go along. And if they didn't do that, then that's on them. They should have actually provided her with that. I'm not saying that she's lying because it might have happened. It might not have happened, though. Um, as to, like, the character models, even if there's no character model, it is always nice to actually see a character, um, you know, a character outline, like a little sketch or some kind of, like, form of storyboard that shows various ideas of the character skins but overall I think the only say that she would actually have a say in would be how she does the voices it wouldn't be on the character's final look so it's it's a tricky situation and it would seem that when she went and said one thing maybe she might have got into a little bit of trouble there for saying it so they've gone and they've asked her to release a statement we don't know what's in her contract so she um so hopefully hopefully she's now no lo longer being harassed because that's not nice and i'm hoping that people are just appreciating the work that she's done as the character um and to be honest with you at the end of the day from what i understand it's a shape-shifting monster that can, can take on any form and that's what the creators one of the skins that the creators went with that's in that's entirely up to them is it transphobic what do you think let me know what you think would that be considered transphobic? I'm not going to say whether I consider that's transphobic or not. I'm going to leave you to decide that. But Libra, you know, I hope that the harassment has stopped. I will say that much. I really do. So that's it for this particular video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. I have linked everything below. I'm on Culture Pop. The be hot tonight, so that's at eight o'clock. So come and join us there. Uh, Culture Pop himself won't be there. He is um, under investigation for being mean to Tuna. Yes, he made Tuna very sad. So I will see you there. And if you don't join me, I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching and bye-bye.